Will RPA become old news in the new year? Will ChatGPT and Copilot replace RPA and manual work in the new year? Is it too late to start an RPA career path in the coming year? A lot of questions like these may be on your mind and you may be wondering if it's even worth starting to learn RPA so late. The short answer is no, it's never too late. So if you have been debating yourself whether it's even worth starting a new career in RPA or learn RPA to boost your current career, then watch this video. We will answer all of these questions and even more, take actual solid action to making it happen in the coming year. Let's get started. If you're new to this channel, my name is Ash and I have been an RPA consultant for the better part of the last decade, having worked on four leading RPA platforms and other intelligent automation technologies in the automation universe. So what does it take to get started with RPA? The answer is my four letter framework, ABCD of RPA. A stands for automation and more recently AI like ChatGPT or other generative AI platforms that are available now. The B stands for business analytics and everything that goes with that word. C stands for communication, which is something that you probably won't see mentioned in a lot of places. A lot of people may not talk about this, but communication remains an important part of the RPA world. And I'll get into that shortly. D is of course development because when you, when you talk about automation, development basically goes hand in hand with that. So let's briefly talk about the four pillars of the ABCD framework of RPA. A stands for automation, which refers to all the tools, platforms, and solutions available in the marketplace that offer the technology of RPA. AI refers to generative AI like ChatGPT or Microsoft Copilot, and also other forms of artificial intelligence such as OCR, which is optical character recognition, and machine learning that enables uh, optical character character recognition learning to be used in document processing frameworks we will talk about these topics in future episodes but right now i'm just mentioning it because that's all part of the rpa world now b stands for business analytics and everything that goes with it whether you want to be a solution architect a developer or a business analyst or even an rpa manager business analytics is something that you will always be involved a little bit with because contrary to the typical software development projects robotic process automation or rpa or intelligent automation whatever you want to call it these type of projects typically involve the business analytics side for everyone's role. Everyone has a part to play in the analysis of the process, asking the right questions and getting the right answers from the stakeholders and from the people who are actually doing the manual job that you're trying to automate. All of these are essential and even as a developer, you may be required to talk to the customer team and get more details on how the process exactly works so that you can actually build it more efficiently so as not to make it difficult for the people who will be managing it in future from customer side and also from the de development side which forms the basis of the next pillar of the abcd framework which is c for communication now clear communication is very very essential to a successful rpa implementation you need to be able to explain your concept really clearly and in simple terms so that anyone from the customer side, whether they are part of the staff that is currently doing the job manually or managers who don't necessarily come from a technical background and may, may just be dealing with robotic process automation for the first time ever. You need to be able to explain these concepts to them without confusing them or overloading them with information. A lot of times I've personally been that guy in the room who just in my uh, excitement or in my enthusiasm to get the get my point across in the most technical way possible. I've used such heavy technical jargon that actually I did more damage than I helped and you know left people more confused. So it's really important that we read the room and accordingly we use the terms that are actually familiar or make sense to the people who are present in the room and that comes from good communication and that is something that I personally work every day still to this day. Now let's talk about the final pillar that is D for development. Development is the most fun part of the 
RPA platform because you can't have a robot without developing it. So when we talk about development, we are talking about the programming languages that are used in de developing the robot and also the design principles that must be followed to make an actually efficient process rather than just making uh, putting something together that works barely or falls over a lot and needs a lot of maintenance over time. Now when it comes to RPA most of the automation in this world runs on Windows which itself runs on Microsoft.NET framework which means if you know the .NET framework or languages like VB.NET or C Sharp.NET then I can already tell you that you'll find it really easy to learn RPA and get ahead in that career. But even if you don't, I have good news for you. There is a website called codecademy.com which teaches different programming languages in fun and interactive ways that will make it easy for you to learn languages like vb.net and c sharp.net which will automatically prepare you to learn RPA much easier. So that was the ABCD of RPA. After learning about the framework, if you're still interested, I thank you for that and I thank you for sticking around. Let's talk about how you can get started with RPA today. So I've been doing a lot of research and I've been curating a sequence of steps that you should take, uh, that one can take to properly start their RPA journey. So let's talk about how you can get started. There's a couple of things to discuss there. First of all, it can be really overwhelming to go and just read up on Google because on Google, you'll find so many different websites and so many different tutorial videos that are saying that they are the best and the latest. The problem is that the tools that they're trying to teach, the tools and the solutions, they themselves go through updates and upgrades every six months to a year, which means every year, every next year the video that was made last year is op obsolete a lot of time the user interface has changed all the options and the the features have changed so even if you're watching something that has been watched a lot on youtube for example it's already out of date because the new new update looks probably completely different or at least somewhat different from what you see in the video which makes it really confusing for a beginner and secondly to become a good rpa professional you need more than just theoretical knowledge of the topic you need to improve your professional network you need to increase your presence in the rpa community help others in the community and get help back so that you can learn and improve your own understanding of the topics. Now, I realize that this is a really long list to keep track of and at times it can get overwhelming because if you're just learning about RPA, then I've already given you a lot of different things to understand and learn about which can be overwhelming. So to make it easy, I've created a seven day email challenge, UiPath Mastery Challenge that will send you seven emails over seven days that will get you set up for future success in RPA career. At the end of this challenge, you will know everything about the UiPath platform and what you need to learn to land your dream role, whether it's developer or VA or architect or something else. You will have a strong professional network and a community to support you on your RPA journey. You can, of course, do this by yourself, but there is great power in accountability. So I recommend that you get at least one or two of your friends signed up with you and then do this together so that you can track each other's progress and exchange notes as you do this challenge together. The path to RPA mastery involves a lot more than what I just covered in this video. Check out this playlist to watch my podcast episodes that explore various topics in more details. Thank you.